What is up guys? It is Josh coming at you today for a video from Ride Motos. And as you can tell in front of us, we have the brand new 2023 BMW K1600 GTL. And this bike is absolutely luxurious. It has every bell and whistle. It has all the tech features. It has an inline six cylinder engine. So we're gonna hop on this motorcycle and we're gonna review the bike. We're gonna talk about the engine. We're gonna talk about the suspension. We're gonna talk about the ergonomics. We're going to talk about the technology and this bike has a literal ton of it. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about who is the intended rider for this absolute beautiful motorcycle that comes in at around $30,000. So stick around for the video. We're gonna get into all of that and more. Let's hop on the bike. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the channel. And as mentioned, today we are on the 2023 BMW K1600 GTL. This is the most luxurious motorcycle that we have covered on the channel by a long shot. And as I mentioned in the intro, this bike has every single bell and whistle that you could possibly throw at it. Um, this is, I mean, it is the epitome of luxury. BMW really went all out on this motorcycle and we have a lot of great stuff to cover, but <laughs> First up, we are going to talk about the engine on this motorcycle, and it is one of the most unique engines that I think is currently on a motorcycle today. Um, it is an inline six-cylinder engine, so, so for some perspective, um, the Harley-Davidson Bagger Touring lineup of motorcycles and the Milwaukee 8 has a two-cylinder engine. Um, and then there are some popular motorcycles like Ducati is running some four-cylinder engines. But BMW had to go a step above that and they made an inline six-cylinder engine putting out a whopping 160 horsepower with around 135 foot-pounds of torque. And I will say, even though this motorcycle is um, just shy of 800 pounds, this motorcycle is an absolute rocket for how much it weighs. I mean, really, this is so, so much fun. Um, you know, when we were picking up this motorcycle from the guys over at Irv Seaver, and hey, by the way, I wanna give a special shout out to the guys over at Irv Seaver BMW for lending us this motorcycle and letting us take it through the paces um, for the last few days. When I was taking this motorcycle, um, one of the guys kind of before I rolled off the lot just said, hey man, be careful. And I kind of was like, be careful. You know, it's a, it's a bagger motorcycle. I've ridden tons of bagger motorcycles in the past. Kind of cut my teeth going across the country on the Harley Davidson Road Glide Special. So I wasn't really worried about it, um, but this motorcycle really is just in an entirely different class of its own. So one of the motorcycles that I currently have uh, that I personally own is the BMW GS1250 and that motorcycle has a 1250 boxer engine in it and that motorcycle has just a ton of pep in it and it just feels alive and so I thought you know all right it's probably going to be something similar to that. This K1600 motorcycle with the inline six cylinder engine is probably the nicest um, most fun manageable usable engine that i have ridden on a motorcycle in a very long time so a lot of engines have different characteristics if you guys have watched any of our review videos in the past you have probably seen that we've talked about the boxer engine which really likes to be revved high where you have some of the inline four cylinder engines that are on current motorcycles that have a lot of low end torque and grunt but maybe sacrifice some of the top end speeds to have some of that low end torque uh, this motorcycle in the k1600 has just such a smooth power band going all the way through and it really just feels absolutely amazing it's going to redline somewhere at 8500 to 9000 rpm so you can certainly get it up there um, but that's not to say that it doesn't have a lot of torque in kind of the 3000 to 4000 rpm range where more than likely you are going to do the most of your riding so it has a six speed transmission on it it has a quick shifter down there which is the smoothest quick shifter that I have used on any motorcycle. So as I mentioned, I have a BMW GS 1250 and that motorcycle actually has a quick shifter, but if you shift from first to second, it kind of lurches you forward and you feel like you just kind of forced the motorcycle into gear. So I was curious to see how the K1600 motorcycles um, stacked up against the GS 1250. And I will say that this is just absolutely buttery smooth using the quick shifter with no clutch going up through the gears as well as going down through the gears 
definitely the best quick shifter that we have tested on any brand of motorcycle on the market today, which should come as no surprise, considering that this is BMW's flagship top of the line through everything in the kitchen sink at this motorcycle. So the motorcycle itself is going to come with different ride modes, obviously. So you're going to have a road mode, a dynamic mode, a rain mode. And I will say for this ride, we've been riding it around for a few days here. Um, we have just kept the bike in road mode and have not needed to even go into the dynamic mode. And really, I mean, the type of person that's going to get this motorcycle is going to be the type of person that is going to want to do long stretches of highway. I mean, this bike comes with a whopping seven gallon gas tank and it has another gallon in fuel reserves uh, so I think the type of person that's going to get this motorcycle you know I guess you could switch it into dynamic if you felt like you needed more power but I will say even in the regular road mode this motorcycle is not lacking whatsoever all right so talking a little bit about the engine and the transmission I don't know if you guys can see right here but there is a little button that has the letter R on there and if you guys guessed it you are probably right this motorcycle has a reverse gear on it and unlike um, the R18 and the R18 bagger that has kind of a weird little lever down off to the side um, this you simply hit a button and you're going to use the starter motor and this motorcycle is going to take you in reverse which is very very helpful considering this motorcycle is north of 750 pounds so if you feel like you ever get yourself stuck in a situation where you're at a slight incline in a parking lot and you can't back this bike up even though the seat height is one of the lowest seat heights of any motorcycle that we have seen but we're going to get into that a little bit later in the ergonomic section uh, the bike does have a reverse gear so it's able to get you out of situations if you need it to so the engine i just honestly it's probably one of the most fun and usable engines in all of motorcycling and i am absolutely shocked at just how much i like this inline six cylinder engine that bmw has on their k1600 gtl motorcycle all right guys well next up we are going to talk about the suspension on this motorcycle and while the suspension is going to bleed a little bit into the electronics of the motorcycle itself we're going to get into it and it is one of the most fancy plush responsive suspensions i think i felt on any motorcycle and i'll start off by saying that this isn't a motorcycle that i would normally gravitate towards i mean i'm going to want something a little bit lighter more sporty kind of nostalgic um so i was curious to see you know how bmw would treat a motorcycle like this which is meant to go across the country and comfort and i was wondering you know is that going to make the suspension just really soft and pillowy and not feel very responsive um, the opposite is true this motorcycle suspension is yes you feel like you're on a cadillac going down the road you're not going to feel the bumps the potholes this motorcycle is going to handle extremely well um, but it does feel tight enough to really take you through canyons and curves and that is all uh, this suspension is sitting on two 17 inch wheels so the front you're gonna have a 17 inch wheel and you're on the back you're gonna have a 17 inch wheel and the motorcycle just feels very good and just absolutely refined so that word refined you're probably going to hear over and over in this review um, and if i had to sum up this motorcycle in one word it is going to be that this motorcycle is absolutely refined <laughs> and that inline six cylinder engine just absolutely sounds like a spaceship or something i mean it's i've not heard anything like it ever on a motorcycle it is just so so unique but anyways back to the suspension itself okay so on a lot of motorcycles you have suspension even on some of the bagger motorcycles uh, you're gonna have decently good suspension for wanting to take it across the country but if you have a passenger on it or if you're gonna put luggage on the motorcycle you're gonna have to adjust the suspension by some sort of preload dampener uh, sometimes it's in the electronic settings on the motorcycle but not on this BMW K1600 GTL no you are not gonna have to put your hand on the motorcycle because BMW has thought through absolutely everything on this bike including the suspension and they have real-time adaptable suspension based on the current weight on the motorcycle so what that means is if you get on the motorcycle and on a whim you decide to throw all of your luggage on the bike and you want to go across country the motorcycle is going to notice the extra weight on the bike and it is going to compensate and adjust the suspension accordingly you don't have to touch anything so if you have a missus or a significant other that you want to put on the motorcycle 
motorcycle. You don't have to worry about touching the suspension anymore. All of that stuff is done. BMW has thought it through. And a couple days ago, I had my missus get on the back of the motorcycle just to see how the suspension would hold up with the passenger on the back. And honestly, the bike felt exactly the same suspension wise as it did um, when I'm just riding single rider. So huge, huge plus in the suspension world. I can't say enough good things about the suspension itself. And I'm surprised with how plush it is, just how responsive it is and dynamic it feels through the corners. I mean, one of the things that I feel like this motorcycle does really, really well is it just feels extremely light on the front end and while like you take a Harley Davidson or some of the Indian Challengers or some of those traditional like touring bagger motorcycles just feel very, very planted and they go in a straight line really, really well. Um, while this motorcycle does do that, although there's a little bit of wander and weave at highway speeds, um, I will say that this motorcycle honestly feels very touring and sporty uh, for how big it is. And I think that's helpful considering you have 160 horsepower with 135 foot pounds of torque that you have responsive suspension and handling to kind of guide you through those corners that you are going to want to roll on the throttle through and have a ton of fun. So the suspension, um, it's, I mean, it's an A plus in my book. It, of course, it's not going to be as dialed in and stiff as a naked bike or a super bike riding through the corners, but I would argue that's not the intended purpose of getting a motorcycle like this. And so I'm happy to see that BMW, while they provided a very soft plush experience on their suspension, they didn't compromise in its ability to really use this motorcycle as a sporty motorcycle handling corners with ease. All right, guys. Well, next up, we are going to talk about the ergonomics on this motorcycle. And as you can probably guess, the ergonomics are pretty good on this motorcycle. But I'll say not perfect, but they're pretty, pretty good. So starting off with the seat, the seat is plush. I mean, it, it hugs you, it, it gets you kind of in that rider seat. It doesn't let you move around. There's a tremendous amount of arch support on the back of the seat. Um, and it, I mean, it, it does what it needs to. It, it keeps you kind of right there in the rider's cockpit. It's very, very comfortable. Uh, the foot pegs are, have a piece of rubber in them, which is gonna make it pretty comfortable. Um, the, you're gonna sit at a 29 and a half inch seat height. So I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, this is one of the lower seat heights on any motorcycle. Uh, so, I mean, which, which is helpful, I guess, because you have a really heavy motorcycle that you're gonna be able to flat foot very, very easily for the majority of riders. Um, but because you sit so low on the motorcycle, from where the foot pegs are, um, it does make it a little bit cramped uh, for like your legs right here, uh, which is really interesting. So I am five foot 10, I have a 30 inch inseam. And I'll say that, I mean, I am as cramped as I would reasonably want to feel on the motorcycle. So if you are a taller rider, it is something to consider that more than likely uh, you're gonna feel a little bit cramped on the motorcycle with just how low the seat is and where the foot pegs are. Um, but I can say ergonomics uh, are generally good on this. So the motorcycle, the handlebars have a ton of pullback here. Uh, your arms are gonna rest at a pretty relaxed, reasonable position. Uh, the motorcycle is not gonna have an aggressive stance. Uh, you are pretty much just upright and how you're riding so you're not slouched backwards but you're certainly not lean forward at all so this motorcycle is very very relaxed and to add on top of all of that you have this huge windscreen in front of you and if that wasn't enough the windscreen is controlled electronically because why not on the bmw k1600 gtl edition so this is going to be the motorcycle windscreen down in the most down position and it does raise all the way up to this position so one thing i will say um, is i've been messing around with this for the last few days and i have realized that if you'd like to ride with the windscreen all the way up uh, certainly makes the most wind is going to be kept off of your helmet itself but a couple things to notice when you are riding like that is you are going to be looking through the windscreen as you're riding down the road and then what that does if you've ever experienced a really tall windscreen in the past is you will know that it creates a little bit of um, turbulent air kind of a pocket in the rider's cockpit um, 
and you're gonna get some of that kind of, uh, it's not buffeting, but it is like your head kind of wants to be pushed forward a little bit, and that's just gonna be from the aerodynamics and the air shooting up over you and kind of coming behind you. So one thing I will say is a, a, a knock is that if you want to ride like this, you are gonna experience a little bit of that kind of turbulence and uh, just kind of dirty air if you're riding at highway speed. So what I have found myself doing over the past few days is riding kind of halfway. So what this does is it keeps the majority of the air off of my helmet, it kind of shoots the air over my helmet, but it allows me to see up and over the windscreen itself. And so kind of does the best of both worlds. This is gonna be a very similar, uh, windscreen height to something that like the Harley Davidson Road King is going to have on it um, and I feel like that's just uh, it, it works well for me and kind of yeah I get some of the cool air around my shoulders and things like that uh, which is nice and it helps to kind of cool you down because one thing I will say with as big and large as this motorcycle is because you have six cylinders going across to make this a very wide motorcycle uh, you do not get a lot of air in the cockpit itself and so one thing I have found is that my legs definitely heat up on this motorcycle especially if you're in stop and go traffic because you aren't going to get a lot of that airflow kind of coming in uh, to your nether regions <laughs> but all in all um, this the ergonomics on this motorcycle are fantastic so like I said I had the missus on the motorcycle a couple days ago and asked her what she thought of it and it was absolutely luxurious so the passenger accommodations on this are done extremely well uh, the one thing that she did say is she felt like she was sitting really really tall up on the motorcycle and while I think that is the case that it's you know a taller uh, rider pillion it probably has something to do with the fact that the the rider is sat just really really low on the motorcycle so something to consider that if you are planning on riding two up which chances are if you are getting the GTL um, with the top box included on it you probably have a passenger in mind on the motorcycle um, something to know that they because they're riding so high up um, they are going to get some of the wind that's going to hit them uh, in the face and things like that so just something to consider but all in all the ergonomics on this motorcycle really are phenomenal i mean if you held a gun to my head and said you had to choose one motorcycle to ride across the country and go from california to new york tomorrow what are you going to choose chances are i'm probably going to pick the bmw k1600 bike just for how plush and just absolutely amazing it is right out of the box i mean you don't have to do a lot to this motorcycle to really actually yeah i mean you don't have to do anything to this motorcycle and just make it ready to go so there you go ergonomics on the motorcycle solid eight out of ten one of the things that i will say and the reason this isn't perfect is you do not have anywhere to stretch out your legs um, i suppose you could put some sort of highway pegs or something coming off of the bars on that side but as they stand right now with how wide the motorcycle is you can't get your legs around to kind of stretch them out so uh, something to consider and that might be if you feel like you are a taller rider or you like to stretch out your legs on the highway it might be worth considering getting the k1600 bagger which is going to have the floorboards out in front of you should you choose uh, to utilize those so there you go all right guys so now that we have covered the ergonomics next section up we are going to talk about the technology on this motorcycle and this motorcycle is absolutely jam-packed with every single bell and whistle that you could possibly have on the motorcycle so to start it off baseline it's going to have all the standard things that you would expect on any self-respecting bmw motorcycle it's going to have cruise control it's going to have heated grips it has a heated seat for both you and the passenger um, and on top of that it is going to have a whole slew of other things and so as we're stopped here at this red light this will be an excellent opportunity to go through this absolute monster of a dash so this is their 10 and a quarter inch tft display and it is just absolutely huge you can see here just how massive it is and to make it even better uh, you can kind of turn it into a split screen mode where you can get some stats of the current trip that you're on you can toggle over to get navigation uh, through the bmw navigation app uh, radio has 
you can see what kind of music you're listening to and all sorts of stuff so uh, this motorcycle has absolutely everything I mean this is basically you have a computer in front of you that's gonna tell you your tire pressure it's gonna tell you how charged up your battery is I mean literally everything to me BMW has the nicest TFT displays in the market and while they have a few different sizes of TFT displays and they have a six inch version and then they have this ten and a quarter inch which they've been rolling out on more and more of their motorcycles this is the gold standard of TFT displays on any motorcycle manufacturer so it's absolutely beautiful um, I'll say if this looks a little bit kind of foggy and not super clear it is because we still have the clear coat on this motorcycle it still has that protective film we haven't yet taken that off because it is a brand new motorcycle so um, but one thing I'll say is I've ridden on several of these motorcycles even in direct sunlight um, the displays are very very easy to read so there you go all right what else this motorcycle has a ton of things so it has integrated fog lights that you can just turn on and off through this little button right here uh, as I mentioned in the ergonomic section, it is going to have a completely electronic controlled windscreen, which is pretty dang nifty. So gone are the days of having to go up here and kind of fumble with things and raise it up and down and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it does have, it's not really electronics, uh, but it does have a little thing for your phone right here if you wanted to keep your phone in there i'll say me personally i found that just more frustrating to deal with than anything so if this was my permanent motorcycle i would probably just put a quad lock or something on the dash here because you just have ample room to do so uh you do have speakers on this motorcycle if you are the type of person that likes to listen to your music and let everybody else know your favorite led zeppelin song as you're rolling down the highway um it can do that i'll say well it does have speakers uh the speakers really aren't that loud so uh they're going to be good for maybe 35 to 50 miles an hour tops um all right what else um gosh i mean this bike just literally has so much electronics uh, i don't want to forget anything so it has this lock button here on the right hand side if you press the button once it is going to unlock all of the different bags and luggage for which this motorcycle has plenty so you're obviously going to have uh, the side bags they're going to be side loading bags on the side you're going to have the top box that this motorcycle comes with and then you're going to have little cubbies kind of down here um, that all just lock or unlock with the push of a button pretty fancy and with the key fob that this motorcycle comes with uh, it does have a button on there where as you're walking away you can just click the button locks up all of your bags you don't have to worry about it completely secure on the motorcycle so that is pretty stinking fancy but i would expect nothing less for a motorcycle that is thirty thousand dollars so i think the base um, model of this if you wanted to get it in a base model is right around twenty eight thousand um, dollars but with the way this motorcycle is specced out with some of its comfort options and things like that uh, this is going to be a thirty thousand dollar motorcycle so certainly um, you get a lot for what you're paying but this motorcycle isn't going to be for everybody i mean you're going to be in the market for something more luxurious uh, you want all the bells and whistles and that is as good of a transition as any to talk about who is this motorcycle intended for so this is obviously not a motorcycle that bmw designed uh, for an entry-level rider this isn't going to be for somebody that wants a quick around town kind of grocery getter this motorcycle is designed for somebody that is very serious about touring and not only serious about touring but somebody that wants absolutely every single bell and whistle on their motorcycle they want all the luxury they want all of the fancy tech and everything but i will say this motorcycle is for somebody that's also going to want a decent amount of power and wants to have fun on a motorcycle so i think for the people that want just a really good solid touring motorcycle there's plenty of motorcycles i mean you go out and get yourself a road glide ultra um, go out and get a gold wing go get some of the indian challengers those motorcycles are going to do all of the things we're talking about really really well but for the person that really wants all of that and then honestly wants to have a little bit of fun through the canyons this inline six cylinder engine is absolutely thrilling i mean i can't emphasize it enough just how fun 
the motorcycle is. <laughs> uh, it, it's surprising, to be honest, and especially in a motorcycle that is, you know, 750 pounds, a uh, little bit more than that, actually. Um, it's, it's really shocking just to see how much fun you have on this big touring bagger motorcycle. So I think the intended person is somebody who doesn't mind spending $30,000 on a motorcycle, but doesn't want to sacrifice performance or tech or anything like that as they're spending that money. So for that type of person, this is going to be the perfect motorcycle. And yeah, I mean, I, I'll say it kind of conclusion, I have enjoyed this motorcycle a lot more than I thought I was going to. So when we took out this motorcycle, I mean, this honestly is pretty opposite from the type of motorcycle that I would typically pick or choose to ride on the weekends. Um, but I am pleasantly surprised and honestly um, has me kind of thinking about whether or not this is a motorcycle that I would want to take me across the country on. So there you go. The BMW K1600 GTL motorcycle brought to you today from Ride Motos. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That is the review of the BMW K1600 GTL. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning into this channel. And again, if you have comments about the K1600, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you have liked this video, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel. That helps us out more than you know. And if you have not done so already, go check out Ride Motos. That is www.ridemotos.com. You can find us on social media at Ride Motos Official. Wanna thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Till we meet again, peace.